Hey everybody, welcome to Hops Metal Show. I'm with it's Hopper, Larry Love, Strang. We decided we're gonna do a special on Pantera. We talked about doing the Pantera thing, but then after Vinnie Paul passed on, we decided we definitely need to do one now. So, um, I guess first we're gonna start off the show. We're gonna do a Black Tooth grin, a pre mixed. Cheers, everybody. Get your pull. Get your pull. Get your pull. Chug it, brother. All right, well, if that's the way we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Yeah, get you a pull. That's dime bag style. Woo. All right. Mm. So I got my pull. That was it. Ooh. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I had one last night. They they're do pretty. They do pool. the damage. <laughs> yeah, I got my pull. All right. I, matches up at Crown Royal. Mm. I guess Ooh. first thing I'm gonna we're yeah. gonna do is introduce albums. The order they come out. I guess pretty much the history of Pantera. I'm gonna let String take it off first a little bit. Yeah, because a lot of a lot of people may have heard of the first original four. Uh, Cowboys from Hell was definitely not the very first one. Um, started off with Metal Magic, um, very glam sounding, um, but their dad being um, a record producer and. Um, he did all the producing for them, and so they whipped out all this pretty much on a budget, thanks to the pops. But so that's the very first one, Metal Magic. Now are they feel? No, these. Um, I don't know. Terry Glazer. Uh, I think uh, we uh, Daryl Abbott, Terry Glaze, Vinny, uh, Vince Abbott, as it says here, and Rex Rocker. So they they had uh, glammy <laughs> names as well. Uh, second up is. Projects in the Jungle, still glammy, um, pretty much along the same lines as this one. Um, and this, these are from Reborn Classics. Um, I, I thought they were from U.S., but apparently when I did a little uh, research that it was Germany, I think is where this company was from, and I don't know if it was legit legal or whatever but they put um a lot of this stuff on that was on vinyl only over to cd um and this one actually has a um a band called shock paris on the second half of it to fill it up so it's actually two on one on this one and this was the same way it's two on one so the third album is i am the night still along the the glammy sound and then I, I'm pretty sure I should have did a little better research on this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure all everybody's the same as far as um, yeah, I think so, on too. the album there. Till we get to here, power metal. Definitely getting more. You can definitely tell that they're getting ready to go to the Cowboys from Hell sound. It's definitely pull away from the glam. There's still a little bit of a glammy sound to it, but um, definitely getting the heavier more. And then obviously you can see that's kind of hard to see there, but they still got the, the big poofy hair, but definitely got the leather, the, the denim and all that, where this was big poofy hair, spandex. The, the high whole, screams. Yeah, the really high screams, where Phil, this is the first one with Phil. Um, awesome vocal sound on this one. It's very similar to um, Cowboys from Hell, anyway. Um, and obviously, after Cowboys from Hell, he kind of starts getting the the more aggressive. more well the more uh, the cigarettes and the drugs and all that. <laughs> yeah. The alcohol got to the voice, the but anyway. So this we're, we still have the high pitch uh, vocals. There's still a little bit of glamminess to it, but. It's a, it's a mix between the transition going from glam to to um, Cowboys from Hell. It's it's the next step anyway. Definitely, this is a pretty good album. Um, Ten songs on it, but definitely worth checking out. All of these I did look. All of these you can find on uh, YouTube. Full albums. So if you've never heard any of these, do your uh, YouTubing and and check them out. But not on Spotify. They're not, morning, they're not on Spotify. Okay, well, but you can check them out on 
YouTube, put them in your playlist, and (laughs) have at it. You can find everything on YouTube. Yes, you can. Almost everything. Not nudity. All right, so I'm going with the the albums that everybody knows. These are the ones (laughs) everybody knows. We have Cowboys from Hell. I guess when the sound changed from the opening riff on, their whole career just slammed. I mean, Cowboys from Hell was a great introduction to the Pantera career. Everybody that took note of this was like, what did you think? Holy that? shit, oh, we I need like to step our game up. up. Yeah. This, this this shit got real real quick. Yeah, Metallica <clears> let <throat> up, let steam up a little bit, and Pantera just... Took it over. Yeah, they just yeah, that's, they completely dominated the scene. And held the flagship for many yeah, years. Uh, many, many, many years. All right, then next we got... This is actually the first one I heard. Vulgar display of power. I mean, it's got walk. New level, mouth war. I mean, there's, there's, not, a bad, there's not a bad track on this one. Not at all. And then the number one album, Far Beyond Driven. Actually, it got the band cover. I don't have the the outlawed cover. But Which I have that on vinyl, the outlawed cover. Yeah. I should have brought it, but I didn't. I didn't think about it. Well, you can't cover it all, I guess. No. But yeah, this this son of a bitch is awesome too. I was telling String, I remember riding around here <clears> with Amigo many many moons ago. Listen to this amigo. album. It was pretty fresh then. You remember listening to that, Amigo? Mm-hmm. That was a long time ago. Yes. And then I guess... 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and the Has Great Southern Trend Kill. I'm going to let Love talk about the Great Southern Trend Kill because he's the one that talks about this album a lot. I love the Trend Kill. The whole album. Yeah. I mean, him and Bob Loki are Trend Kill. I mean, they're, they're the ones that push that album hard. It's about my friends. It's probably my least favorite. It's so aggressive, though. It is. It's it is. so aggressive. And, and, the and I strong. started losing... I think on a this lot one, of people did. I really lost on this one, but then when we get <laughs> further on down, a little line, bit further on to the next, I really pick back up. I, I really like the next one. To me, I think was the this was the pinnacle of Pantera, the the full aggression. Yeah. To where the anger was. After that, the divide was coming. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You, and can you can. And and you can kind of hear it on yeah. this that that there was turmoil. And what, by the time... Now, I know they did this one, like, Phil and Rex was in New yeah. Orleans, and the rest that. were in Texas, mm-hmm. but I want to say it was like that for the Trim Kill also. I don't me, know if it was all like it that. It might not have been, now, but War Nerve, oh, yeah. And then, actually, this made my countdown. A lot of people never talk about this, but this live album, shit, <laughs> this thing is awesome. Go ahead. And I mean, I would put it up there. I mean, it's just as good as Kiss is Alive. I mean, everybody talks about how great that live album is. You need to check this out if you if you want to hear a good live album. I mean, Pantera brings it every time. And I was looking on Metal Injection the other day. Um, they had this. They didn't have them in any specific order, but the 16 most kick-ass live albums, this was one of them. Yeah, that's so a, I don't know out of all I, all everything from back to black. I think Black Sabbath made the list early. It was in the list. I don't like I said they weren't numbered, but they were in the list. So it was early on live albums up to current albums. So and and, and like I said, this one this one was in there. So and it is pretty and, kick-ass. And yeah, you need to if you don't have it, never listen to it. Check it out because it's pretty freaking awesome. And the <clears> last one. Is reinventing steel and like Love said and with you know Rex and Phil doing they were kind of doing their own thing here I think down in Louisiana and Dimebag and Vinny were kind of doing their thing in Texas and you can really hear the distance but I guess what I forgot to touch on too in this collection and it's really being known right now Vinny was big time behind the scenes everybody talked about Dimebag what he done, but Vinny was the man behind the scenes. I mean, he made the recording, the engineering, all that stuff. Yeah, Vinny was a big part of he that. Did, did as much as what he did, but yeah, that drum sound. I mean, that's all <clears throat> Vinny. Vinny was picky at that, and I mean, that's that was a big part of it. And I, I read where he taped half dollars yeah, or something like, to his drums to yeah, get a different kind of that. sound. Which yeah, I didn't know that. But. I mean, and I was, and after I heard that, I read that. 
I kind of went back to revisit a lot of this. So I was going back through all of this. And I was trying to see if I could pick that out. Did you know that? I, I couldn't catch it. He but. put it on his drum heads. So when he's kick drum extra. hit, it get, that's how he, that's how you get that solid that double bass sound that he's got that he's known for. I mean, that's his hmm. his thing. But um, yeah, we go through the studio collection. They I mean they got a even even reinventing steel. I mean. There's some good stuff on that. don't mean shit. I like yeah. that. That's to me. This is a solid album. There's a lot of stuff on that one that I really, really like. Like I didn't care as much. You like this more I, than I, that? I do. Damn. Honestly, I do. And this, probably half of it, I really, really like. Oh, then first. The other half, eh? It's then first it's two, not bad. This it. one, it's not even half. But I really got back into that because. I, I know that they were starting to fall apart before this was even finished, I'm sure. There's a lot of good stuff on this. <laughs> to me, I Cast like... Shadow. I mean, Yesterday Don't Mean Shit. I uh, electric, you Gotta Belong To It, Revolution, uh, Electric. I mean, there's a lot. I, I really like this one. But yeah. bottom line is, this is where it's at. That, yeah. <laughs> right here. I mean, this right here. Um, when you wrong, say love, wrong one right here yeah. well, I would say these you know to right. argue a string I'd go with these two but but this made a lot of people say oh shit we gotta step our shit up yeah yeah they brought there was a new there was a new that, a revolution was yeah, coming a revolution <laughs> yes and but, throughout all of this they they flew the flag but even that stuff I mean even that stuff's Awesome for his time. I mean, for his time, yes. Just got, and, o- just got overlooked because there was so well, much I of mean, it out there. There was people didn't really. The only way you could get it was that if you had connections with the band, if you watched them, if you in Texas. I mean, there, anybody in Texas probably had all four of these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they were probably touring around Texas and maybe few states well, around well, Texas, and that's probably with the music, it. With the music scene at that point in time, I mean, you know, you that's didn't have the internet. You yeah, didn't have that, that's all tape trade. That's, yeah. that's where tape you know. trading, mm-hmm. that's it. But yeah, we, um, I guess we'll go on. I, I wrote a couple questions down here. Figured, so I'm kind of curious what, how these guys are about Pantera, and if y'all want to comment and say what, you know, answering these questions, more than happy to thumbs up and all that stuff um first question is what was your introduction to pantera my introduction was i used to go to music playing all the time chris was manager probably the manager at the time not for sure but um there was this this dude in there he was an employee i don't even know his name but i know i was all the time in there looking for something new and he was always telling me you know Man, the Black Album, that's sweet. You need to check out these guys called Pantera. And they had Vulgar Display of Power out. And he's like, you need to really get this. And I, I mean, I took it home, and especially when I got to walk, it was like, holy shit, this is freaking awesome. Where have I been? You know, it's like, that was that was pretty much my introduction. It's like, God, this stuff is awesome. You know, Metallica... <laughs> They've done. They've done. Lost their spot. I mean, this band Pantera. They definitely know what they're doing. Uh, for me, um, I can't remember his name. He lived up on Third Street. Uh, Mark Hadley. Yeah, he had Vulgar, and we were listening to it at his house. That's my first introduction to Pantera. Probably it was right around there, and then I guess with Bobby Loki too. What'd you think? Oh, it was aggressive. It was something new. You know, because Metallica was on a hiatus, and so yeah, it was something to listen to that was new and aggressive. Something to get the aggression out. Oh yeah. For me, I want to say I can't quite remember if it was this one, but I think this is the one. It was you that said, "Hey, somebody's got this. They didn't care for it." They're trying to sell it. And I think I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll I'll buy it. And I'm pretty sure it was this album, because it doesn't have a sticker on it as 
this one has Town and Campus Thank Records. <laughs> um, Rock so I'm pretty sure it was this one. It could have been this one because this one does not have a sticker on it either. But whichever one it was, it was one of these two. And I remember Hopper's like, this dude's got this. This is a kick-ass album. You need to check it out. So I'm like, all right, whatever. And I'm like, sure, I'll buy it, whatever. I think it was like five bucks or whatever. Somebody was trying to get rid of it, get it off their hands or whatever. So I bought it. And it was like... <laughs> From their own. This, yeah, this <laughs> is pretty own. fucking kick-ass. It's like, I'm all right. You know, I like this. And I, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was this one because... I didn't care as much for this one. But, <laughs> um, but yes, that was because of you. I'm, and, and I'm sure after that, that's why I trucked on down to <laughs> yeah. Town and Campus that's Records. That's why mine's got a U sticker on it. And some some yes. fool got rid of that. Yeah. <laughs> Town and Campus Records for people around the Harrisonburg area. Yeah, anybody that knows, we did a lot of we flipping. We did. <laughs> yes. Professionals. All day long. Yes. All right, so we're moving on. Town and Campus Rocks, by the way. Did it. rock. It's not around anymore. You can buy beer. Um, but we can buy beer there. Anyway. I guess, what Pantera album is your favorite? I'm going back to Vulgar. First one I heard. Still, I listen to it today to make sure that yeah, it's still, it still yeah. still is like the great <laughs> album that I always thought it was. And I'm still giving it two thumbs up. Metal Horns. Folger, Walk. I mean, it's hard to beat. For me, the great Southern Trend Kill. So much aggression. Riding around in Bobby's black Jeep. Just, yeah. I don't know, after the CRV. Yeah. Well, I remember we, the CRV. We raged back oh, then. <laughs> but, yeah. The great Southern and they, I told you, man, kill. Bobby and Love pushed that album hard. They probably sold, they probably sold a thousand copies on their mm-hmm. own, man. And, and that was to see that I'm just coming into the scene. I'm just getting into hanging out with this guy right here and hanging out the strip. Yeah, cruising, cruising. But for me, this is where it's at. I mean, I'm sorry. This changed the sound for metal. People really other bands really changed their their game plans up because of this right here when it hit people were shit oh you yeah. gotta step her game up I remember and, and Scotty Yines, it's man. it's front to back there is not a bad song on this album and that's that's what it is for me Scotty Yine, I remember him saying <clears throat> I guess it was you know he was saying that Cowboys from Hell that opening riff he was like, wow, we're in trouble. Yeah. He said, here they come. You know, it's like. It's the new sound. And it's hard to believe, you know, even like what what floors me is you read about Sebastian talks about how much fun they were to tour with. And it is hard to believe that Pantera opened for Skid Row at one point in time. I yeah. mean, that's when, yeah. the, that's when the freight train was rolling. I mean, that probably didn't last long. No. no. And Skid Row was obviously a headliner. And it probably didn't take long for yeah. them to be the opening act. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, Pantera. Yeah, once they hit, it was it was it was on. All right. So, what is it you like about Pantera? Um, probably with me, man. The songs, the riffs, the drums with the aggression and the fight. That, man, they carried the flag hard through the nineties. I mean, if it wouldn't be for Pantera and, and anybody tell you this. They carried metal. I mean, they put it. They literally put heavy metal on their back. The metal flag it had metals. Pantera on yeah. it. That that was during that during that time period. I mean, grunge was hitting, killing everything off. Yep. Hair metal was dead. It was dying quickly. Good. And, and <laughs> Pantera flag started flying hard, but it flew strong. If you listen to the live album, I was telling String. Phil even says, "Man, they the you know the regular people say metal's dead. There's thirty thousand people die. there singing every single mm-hmm. song every night for him. And he's like, look, look at the guy beside you and tell me metal's dead. I mean, it ain't. They they're died. just telling me it's dead. 
you know, Pantera proved through the 90s that it's still alive and well. Yep. And then when they started to fall off, then you had Slipknot come in behind it, so. Yeah. You know, Slipknot. And, and by that point, the grunge scene was done. You had other. It did what it needed it to do. It did what it did. It, it, it flushed out a lot of the. the the big not hair the, screaming. Not that I'm going to say CD, but it's, it was it was never CD. But it, it flushed away a lot of metal. But when it picked back up, well, what Nirvana helped do was help yeah. kill the power ballad big yeah, hair. It, it did. Yeah, it, it killed that whole genre pretty much altogether. But now it's back. Yeah, I mean it's. Well, everything comes back in a cycle. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all full circle. Yeah, I mean, do y'all do y'all agree with the whole? I mean, Pantera, do y'all riffs. Oh, you know I mean, riffs, aggression, nineties <clears throat> metal, young, dumb, I mean, full of cum, and ready yeah. to go. Oh so. yeah, they, I mean, I know when we saw them, and every time we saw them, it was aggression, just mm-hmm. pure yeah. aggression. And any band, new new age band, I say new age, which. In through the 2000s up, any band that was coming out, influence, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any, any of the hardcore bands, and they'll tell you. I mean, it's kind of like, but Pantera <clears throat> side. I mean, they were huge fans of Metallica. I mean, that's where that's where it all come from. I mean, it all comes no, from that 80s. I'm not thrash, take anything away. But from they it. they carried it. But yeah, that I mean, all goes all the way back next, to Black Sabbath. Yeah. So I mean, we yeah. just keep continuing. Yeah, it's a going. cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So, yeah, we could probably (laughs) talk about this all day. (laughs) But, all right, so we'll go on. Um, All right, what do you say is Dimebag's best solo? Uh, Me, hands down. Um, Cemetery Gates. Um, Dimebag, man, that that was a really shitty deal, man. It was, I mean, a man that, you know, doing what he loves and some idiot comes on stage. And it ruins it all. Yeah, it ruins it. But I mean, he's he'll never be forgotten. I mean, it. He's like he'll be always be one of the greatest. I mean, he's right up there with Randy Rhodes. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. he's jamming with Randy Rhodes. But I mean, I put him on the same level as I put Randy Rhodes. Mm-hmm. I mean, never mentioned in the same sense. Definitely a top guitar player. Definitely, definitely by far. I mean, what would you say <laughs> favorite solo? I'm not gonna say a solo, but I'm just gonna say for Walk with two chords. You know, because the old saying was, if you can do <laughs> yeah. three chords, you could become a rock and roll star. <clears throat> Dimebag showed you can do it with two chords. And dun, 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 dun. I mean, that's all you need. So, I mean, so I'm going to go with that just for the two chord factor. And scream, my gosh, he make guitar scream. Mm-hmm. He can make it scream like nobody else ever could. And it, and Dom, for the me, right here, domination. Oh, yeah. But I mean, that's primal scream and yeah I mean anything or concrete sludge I mean sorry yeah anything on this but domination it's for me that's yeah it's the bee's knees well actually domination (laughs) domination (laughs) will be that'll be my next one which is what song do you think showcases Vinnie Paul's best drum work for me which Vinnie Paul just we're guessing a heart attack. That's what it's kind of looking at. But, I mean, it shocked the rock world as much as Dimebag did. I mean, the Abbott Brothers going, man, what a loss that was. But Vinnie Paul don't get nearly the credit. I don't think he deserves he behind the scenes. A lot of people everything. was dime, dime, dime. But Vinnie. Well, anybody drums. that listens to drum, anybody, any drummer, period, knows who Vinnie Paul is. Oh, yeah. Portnay even said he yeah, carried it. He, he carried it next level. Yeah, like he said, he even said that they carried the flag yeah. the whole time. And that's coming from, you, you know, got the hardest, <laughs> the hardest hitting drummer, period, hands down. I mean, when Portnoy's saying that, you know, Portnoy's yeah. all, I mean, he's, he's awesome in his own words, yeah. but for him to say that, there's got to be something to it. Yeah. But drum work, and I know Bob Loki and Mike May both said this on the Pantera album um, thing I'd done. But domination, I, I saw that man the intro for on. me. That and then and when you came up with those questions that you were kind of looking at doing, I'm like, 
I went back and revisited it just to refresh my memory and in domination. It's farts thinks like a motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. It, but for me, I mean, and this you, and even for me, this this whole album just set you know set it, it for everybody. I mean, and and there's so much solid. Oh, this like yeah. It's it's. it's I yeah. mean, Cowboys from Hell. I mean, it's it's you. It's timeless. If you do not like this album, I want you. Yeah, this drink to, is like pressing. Yeah, if you do not like this album, I want you to comment why. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Anyway, but what do you think, drum wise? Vinnie I'll Paul, go, I'll agree with Domination Man. That's yeah. That. I mean, do you think Vinnie Paul's <clears throat> thing of a loss is down back? Oh yeah, was? man. Well, the whole loss, the whole. I mean, yeah, it sucks all together. All yeah. together, the whole the whole situation. I mean, it sucks how the whole. The whole breakdown and everything went down. I mean, that whole, the whole Pantera thing, just it all sucks. Mm, I mean, yeah. it all it sucks. I mean, it was like we had this great band that just tore themselves apart. Yeah, they just. Beat but themselves you, up. you can look at a lot of bands yeah. that do that. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they were eventually ripped themselves apart yeah. because inner fighting, egos, and egos, and, and, and I mean, it happens with a lot of them. So, but <laughs> Vinny Paul related. <laughs> You listen to any of these albums? I yeah, you can. I'm having a hard time getting them invited here. Anyway, get your pool with all fucking get us your up. <laughs> All five of these, there is no difference in Vinny Balls, no. Balls, Balls, <laughs> Balls, He's Balls of the Walls. There is no difference in any of these albums. He is full on, in your face, just first one to the last one. Yes. Yeah. There is no difference in his drumming style. He brought it every song. And honestly, when when I was looking at your list of the questions that you were gonna we were gonna talk about, I really had a hard time because he doesn't have a bad drumming style. No, no. There is there is no bad song, period. I mean that's for even, his drumming. Anyway. Even the Lost in Vegas dudes took <clears throat> Suicide Note Part Two, which is, I mean, it's just wide open yeah. noise, and they took all everything out except for the drums. drums. They and you drum listen track. to Vinnie Pauls. Have you heard that? Yeah, yet? that's. I was gonna say something about that. Actually. And it's like that right there, man. You can appreciate the drum work just right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you put all the instruments. You don't really. That's stuff you don't really hear. But it's there like, were subtleties of it. There was a track of, of floods. There's a drum solo, just a drum track. Of floods on YouTube, also. I watched a little bit of that one, but it's hard hearing that. I like the train sound he makes through drag the water. The, the, the flood. Yeah, just the drum tracks alone. I mean, because you want to hear it all together, but when you listen to it, I mean, it's it's there. I mean, Vinny. Yeah, and I mean, it's <clears throat> yeah, and if if you don't, I mean, I don't know what everybody thinks, but everybody <laughs> talks about dime bag this, dime bag that. Vinny, man, Vinny is just as important. In my book, is just as important as Dimebag. Yeah. I mean, I know I said that a while ago, but can't preach that enough. I mean, you listen to all the rock stars talk about it. Man rolls with motorcade, you know, because he just is like that much. No, nothing but high things talked about Vinny just mm-hmm. like he was Dimebag. But, um, all right, so we guess next one we'll go to. I thought about what is fair Pantera moment. And I've watched the Dime Visions, and there's a lot of cool, you know, cool, funny stuff. But, man, one thing that sticks out to me that I always thought was cool was Dime Bag tossing the cups. Yeah. They'd bring out that tray of beer, and he'd toss. Did you ever see him toss cups of beer up in, up in the upper deck? I mean, the cup would end up they in had, the guy's hands then. They, they had it. Yeah. They had to sit down to a science. And I know, I mean, I know there's a lot of shit about dime bag that you could say, but you know, that was the first thing that come to mind was tossing the cups. Tossing the, there's plenty. Yeah, there's probably a lot. There's of, a lot of. Actually, I don't know if it's on this as much as on three. Maybe it's three. I know. I think I've it's seen on it. three. A lot. I mean, they just keep running loops. And of it, it might and be on this like, one too. But yeah, I think it was on, like, actually it was on three, which I, I I couldn't find that box that I had that one in. But anyway, I mean, he would literally come out with a tray of beer. And you would have a guy up on the upper deck. Solo cup. And he's just, I mean, just and just throws it and lands in the dude's hand. 
I mean, no beer spilled or nothing. Well, it it wasn't still. full cups. It was yeah, probably but, only that much in it. But, but still. a solo cup getting tossed like halfway across the stadium, that's pretty impressive. I mean, I thought when I saw Metallica, Love probably remembers this. We saw Metallica Black Album. James Hetfield brought out a whole tray of beer to the people on the floor. And I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. But then I saw Dimebag pitching beers and it completely overrode Hetfield. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like, and that's one of my coolest memories. Mm-hmm. I know it might be lame, but that's where I'm at. My favorite, I guess, at Nissan with the throwing of the grass. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's my favorite memory with Pantera. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy, too. And it didn't stop <clears> until <throat> Phil came out and said, give some respect to the Godfather and then Ozzy came out and the grass stopped. Yeah, how did, yeah. yeah Phil laid the order down. And that's right. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, I did too. And it did stop. But, man, they tore the shit out yes, of that Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had seats, so I wasn't in on the was that, was that the, the that was the first thing. time we saw him. That was the time that we were talking about that I got. Was he bald head? Mm-hmm. All right, you Phil see. was drunk, and him and uh, Zach were having a competition of who could get the drunkest during the um, – while being backstage, and then yeah, but I still Phil come out was ass. wasted. Well, but I remember the second time I seen him. It, it honestly, it sounded like it didn't sound like shit, but it was it wasn't that great. Yeah, because Phil it just was, was. I mean, the band was there, but the band was the backup there. band but, was there. But Phil was just inebriated, so it was not as enjoyable. You got to have the vocal part, yeah, to make up the rest of it. But and that brings us on next thing. This, I'm not sure. I think it was Mike May. I texted him. He never replied back. Of course, I just sent a little bit ago. I went to this show. and I wish I would have went to that one. It was incredible. White Zombie, Pantera. I remember it rained like hell between White Zombie and Pantera. Some idiot climbed up in the, in the rafters, climbed around. I thought they was going to cancel the show. But, um... It was the first time I saw Pantera and White Zombie. I mean, they were good, and it was cool to see them because they had the theatrics and stuff. But Rob Zombie still run around too much. I'm winded. I can't sing. But man, all I remember about mm-hmm. Pantera was the only stage thing they had was these pentagrams flying around marijuana leaves. Other than that, they come out and ripped your head off. I mean, it was like we left that show. And I'm pretty sure it was Mike May. Like, holy shit. These guys, man, they're the real deal. No frills, just straight out in your face. Yeah, there was no, I mean, White Zombie had all the theatrics, which was cool. But Pantera, man, they just ripped your head off. And I remember, I was thinking today, I remember after the show, some dude got his ass whipped. I don't know, I don't know what he did, but man, some guy was kicking the shit out of him down by the bathroom. But <laughs> and I guess that Pantera aggression, aggression, all the ass whipping for some guy. But um, that's I saw them in this is '96, and I saw '97 at Ozfest in 2000, which that was Killer Bill. Is that the show you went to? Mm-hmm, the Power yeah. Man 5000. Which, love, he got to see the great, the great Pantera. Cause... And that's where... Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get to talk about my experience, my <laughs> best experience. <laughs> Ozfest, Two Lid, and I were hanging around the second stage. Did you remember this? Hopper. No. <laughs> was it, it was your fault. Was it his fault? Yeah. Somebody had to go to the bathroom. I'm pointing at you. Okay. <laughs> and... Two Lid and I had stuck around the second stage. Phil come out, and they had these like little postcards that was like promotional postcards, and I got it autographed by Phil, who was hanging out back behind the second stage to watch whoever was playing at that point in time. I don't remember even who it was. But Phil came out, and I just threw my postcard because that was the quickest thing I could get to, and he just... Chicken scratched his autograph on it, and Tule got his autographed, and they come back, and we're like, look, 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 what we got? Why y'all are gone? He still talks about that, how it was all your fault. <laughs> well, you know. Somebody had to go to the calls. bathroom. When nature calls, you got to go. <laughs> but right? that, that, that was my moment. Um, but, but a second moment that I had, I'm going to backtrack it a little bit, which I just remembered. It's hard to see you, but right there, on my DVD, I got 
Vinnie Paul to autograph that. And we saw them open up for, I want to say it was Dragon Force. And I got that autographed, and I, w I got a picture with Vinny, and I was the last person to actually, before they hauled him off, back to the tour bus. But then, then this was after Dimebag um, was killed, taken away from us. Um, so he had a bodyguard, and the bodyguard was trying to take him away, and I asked real quick if I could get a picture, and I, I, I'm assuming I got this autographed in. Um but that that was a shining moment again for me too, as well. But just, I mean, Vinny was the shit. Yeah, I'll agree with that. But um, you want know, another one was love. You said what two shows did you go to? Did you go to this one too? This uh, would be two thousand. Does that one have the hate breed? My mm, bad. Hate Breed was on the second right stage, the second, or because they hadn't been on the main stage yet. No. I had like Tin Queen of Stone Age. Damn, I don't remember seeing that. You I, must I, not I was there. That one. I didn't this go to was that one. awful, awful Pantera show. Well, it wasn't was awful. Bad feel one. bad feel show. Yeah, bad and that feel was show. that was my three shows. The first show, White Zombie kicked total ass. Second show was pretty fr freaking awesome. That's the one. I guess all three of us were at that show. We all three saw a kick ass show, and then two thousand show, which, which Phil was just so drunk that it was it wasn't even good. I mean, I don't. What shows did you? The only show I ever saw Pantera would have been the the um, that Ozfest. Did but, you see Down then when you saw? But see, there was an Ozfest I didn't go to. Did you go to the one the Priest was at? Because mm -mm. that's the only one I didn't go to. I went to one where it was uh, System of the Down, um, a Dreamer. Um, yeah, they weren't there that year. I remember that they hit. That was the year I went, and and, and Hate Breed was on the second stage. So I went to Hate and watched Hate Breed instead of whoever was on stage. And then I hung out when a Dreamer was on, and talked to the guys from Hate Breed. And then the one with when it was Pantera, Black Sabbath. Yeah, that was ninety seven. Those guessing. are the two that I went to. That was the two Ozfests yeah. that I went to. So what about you? Ninety seven and two thousand? Uh yeah, those were the only two times I saw them both at Ozfest. Uh, definitely then ninety seven was more memorable. Uh two thousand Phil, like I said. That's all we both said. Yeah, he was um, trash. Just trash. It just, it just. He took, took everything away because he yeah. was so, and you couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't get into. And that it. was the beginning of the downfall. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. Or it was in the midst of the downfall. Yeah. All right, so everyone in pain. Yep. What Pantera meant to you is Pantera. Man, they were freaking awesome. Carried. I mean, I said earlier, carried everybody through the nineties. I mean, carried metal hard. The riffs, Vinny's drum work, Phil's vocals. I mean, they were the perfect band. Rex's bass grooves. I mean, I would put Pantera, say, man, they had it all. I mean, they had everything that you wanted in a band. And it was four people, and they did everything well. And that's what made me love Pantera. I have to agree. And, yeah, and at that time period, you know, young and aggression, you know, it was they were going hand to hand. I mean, it was perfect time period for our us growing up during that time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and for me, I mean, I was kind of a late bloomer to a lot of the. I didn't have a lot of exposure. I didn't have the outlets or when I lived where I lived. I should say, I didn't have MTV, so I had whatever I could get and, and whoever I hung around with if they had and I didn't have but one or two at the time early on people to listen to harder rock heavy metal stuff and it wasn't until I got hanging around Hopper that I really started getting into a lot of heavier bands and, and more at that time it was kind of early on it was more ha hair metal stuff and then it got more into the more heavier stuff and and for me, it was 
that was probably a turning point was Pantera. It was like, I really liked hair metal, and that was kind of what the little bit of exposure I did have, that was what I had was the hair metal style. And from, like I said, what I thought was um, vulgar, um, from then on, it was like, and even now, my music style, I've gotten into more heavier, more aggressive, more um, unpleasant style music, I guess you could say. Um, I, I still enjoy listening to hair metal. And there's stuff I really like, but um, Pantera, I mean, they, they just, they stuck. And that's what brings it. That, and still to the day, I mean, you can't go wrong with Pantera. Nah. <clears throat> and probably the stuff you're listening to. I mean, <clears throat> Pantera, if it's, I mean, if I'm the guy that introduced it, I, I mean, you've, you surpassed me in the, the heaviness because you listen to a lot heavier <laughs> stuff than I do. But I mean, and I've always said, you know, everybody <clears throat> talks about the vocals, growly vocals. Feel was about it. I mean, mm-hmm. that was, for me, that's, that's as growly as I wanted my vocals. And at the time, that was probably about the most that I wanted then. But and I kept, as time went on, I've, I've had to go more and heavier. And, <laughs> it, and I don't like a lot of the really aggressive stuff style heavy dark you know kind of stuff but I don't mind as much now on the more aggressive vocal styles that a lot of newer bands have versus back in the mid 90s what was out at that time you want to wrap it up I'll say I've gotten old because it's Banjos and mandolins. <laughs> Speaking of banjos and mandolins. But the shit's still let's there. Not, let's oh, not yeah. forget this Oh, one. and I still listen to it, and I still love it. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's you know, and if it's aggressive. Anybody out there love that it. hasn't heard this, this is way off from the Pantera style, but yet when you listen to it, you still get that Pantera style sound a little bit, but with more of a little country twang I guess because David Allen Co is the, the vocals on this one but you got the that brothers ain't country but you got the brothers Abbott kicking ass taking names and drinking beer and whatever else they drink <laughs> to and black dumb. tooth black tooth so probably are a, a, a plenty on that one and we got Dime Vision 2 just <clears throat> yeah, coming out and Dime Vision 2 just to get uh, a little sample last year. And, and honestly there's a song the last track on this is uh, called Whiskey Road. There's a DVD plus a CD. It's only five songs on there. Um, Whiskey Road. It's a track that, I, and honestly, it I, for a total different sound, it holds a strong second to what I originally said for... Um, my favorite solo, Dimebag solo, the, the last song, The Whiskey Road. It's very um, Leonard Skinner-ish in, in, in style, but I almost said that was my favorite. But I'm kind of like what I'm listening to now. And, and honestly, I could go through all five of the studio albums, the, the, the last major studio albums and I can listen to it one day and tell you one thing and the next day I can tell you something totally different but on this one I, I really enjoyed that solo and it was really 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 good well I think and loves it, it looks like we're gonna love's do a probably second. picking up the best way to wrap this up one last pull oh, man. one last pull to have it brothers we got them all in there I know like Vinny Vinny's the big um Jaeger man he's you Jager man, like Jager. but I think Jager's he's good. I think he'd be happy with no. with this. <laughs> but I think um, this would. Thanks, folks. Everybody enjoy. Get your pull. Get your pull. Peace. <laughs>